Hey you doing everyone, greetings and welcome to today's episode of 8 Bits in the Basement which is a whole new format because what I want to show you today is a little bit of assembly small little bit, just compare it to basic, give you a kind of a flavour of what the heck assembly language actually is and the reason I'm making it is this is the very kind of video that I wished existed back a year or so ago when I started, you know, learning assembly but um, yeah, just to give you a flavour for it. This is in no way for anybody who knows about assembly at all. This is really for somebody who kind of fools around in basic mostly and is a bit interested by assembly. But anyway, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be having a look at assembly language and a little bit of basic through the eyes of the Thompson M05. So what I'm going to be using is the DC Moto emulator, which emulates the entire suite of Thomson MO and TO computers that were available here in France back in the 80s. And this emulator has been written by a guy, by a guy called Daniel Colomb, and he's a huge figure here in France in the Thomson retro computer community. But um, he makes all kinds of hardware and he's also after uh, writing this emulator, so it's a fantastic little thing. But the reason that I've picked the Thompson MO to show this is that it there's no real setup needed apart from just the assembly code that you want to type in. So when I show you the programs, it's really only exactly what's needed in order to get it to do a thing without any initial setup of clearing memory or setting up screen modes or any of that kind of thing. So it makes it easier to see what the heck is going on. So anyway, what I thought I'd start by doing is just by saying assembly language lets you speak directly to the processor and tell it exactly what you want it to do. You see, a computer is made up of three main sections, more or less, when you're dealing with assembly. Now, I'm sure there's people say, no, it's not, Peter, you're wrong. But anyway, just to keep it simple, you've got the processor, you've got the memory, and then you've got all the other peripheral devices. And the way it works is the memory inside in the computer is mapped out into various different zones. You've got a portion of the memory, which is your screen RAM or your screen memory. What you will see on screen is contained in that memory. And then you've got a portion of memory that's your RAM. It's like where you can store your programs and pretty much where information is stored that the computer will use to run programs and whatnot. So that's another portion. And then you've got kind of a portion that's mapped out to hardware devices. So the likes of graphics chips and interface chips, you know, that let you control keyboard and joystick and all that. And if you write to any of these memory locations, you're actually controlling those chips. And when you're using assembly language, you're telling the processor to take a value and put it somewhere in memory. So that is pretty much what assembly language is doing for you. Now we can, using poke commands, pretty much show you what I'm talking about here through basic in a kind of a simple way. A poke command will let you write a value to a memory location. And what we're going to do is, knowing that the Thompson M05's memory map starts with the screen memory, so what we've got is Location zero is the top left-hand side of the screen you see here in front of me, and location 7999 is the bottom right-hand side. We can poke anything between zero and 7999 with a value and see what happens on screen. We can see it happening more or less in real time. So what I'll do is I will poke memory location 2500 with the value 255. That's the maximum 8-bit value that we can put into a byte. And when I press enter, you see a little line appear on screen. What we're after doing is we're after turning on all the pixels inside in that byte. And we've got a little line on screen. So you see by poking a memory address, we can make stuff happen. Now it's handy to to show in this demonstration by poking screen RAM because that way you'll see stuff happen on screen. But if you poked other memory addresses like linked to keyboard or joystick or whatever, you could make other things happen as well. So this is pretty much what you're doing in machine language, but it's happening very, very fast. And it is how a computer works, more or less that. So what we'll do is just to show you, I will poke memory location 7999 with the same value, 255. 
and you'll see the bottom right hand side there is after light, lighting up. So that is the bottom most pixel that you can control on screen. If I did the same thing to poke memory location zero with the same value, 255, we'll get a line appearing just above the tree on the three and a half inch disc there. You see? So there we are. So we have screen location zero down to screen location 7999. And that is how we can more or less control the screen. That's how sprites and things are drawn on screen as well. But this is basically what you are doing when you're using assembly language. You're sending values to memory locations to make various things happen, be it on screen, be it in memory so that a game is running in a certain way or whatever, or on a hardware device that is mapped to a portion of memory. That's pretty much it. So if I want to turn off one of those little lines that I just drew up, we'll say the very first one, if I poke memory location 2500 with the value zero, it'll turn off all the pixels on that center line there. And there we go, it's disappeared. So that is more or less how, well, how a computer works, more or less. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to show you a little basic program that I've written. And what it should do is fill the entire screen blue. That's more or less it. So we'll have a look at that. Okay, so here we have a little simple basic program. There's nothing complicated about this at all. And we're using more or less the poke command and we're using a couple of variables. And what, what it's going to do, this program, is fill the entire screen with, it's going to turn on all the pixels on the screen. Starting at the top left hand side, working right the way down to the bottom right hand side. So what we have here is we have 10. A equals 255. So that is the value that we're going to be filling all the bytes with. 20, X equals zero. That's the first byte that we're going to be starting at. Zero is at the top left hand side of the screen. And line 30 is the poke command that I was running before. So we're poking whatever value is in X, comma, whatever value is in A. That's pretty much it. So it'll start by poking zero with the value 255. And then what it does in the very next part of that line is it increments the value of X. So we go from zero to one because X equals X plus one. Line 40 is checking to see that we haven't gone off the bottom of the screen, that the value in X isn't greater than 7999. So what we have there is if X is greater than 7999, go to 60. So line 60 will end the program. However, if it's not greater than 7999, it's going to go to 30. That's what line 50 is telling it to do. And it's going to poke the next address and increment and keep on going. Now, when I run that, you see it running right here in front of us. We've got this kind of thingy filling up all the bytes on screen, working its way down uh, as it goes. That's pretty much it. That is our program. And when it gets to the very bottom of the screen, it will stop. Now, as you can see, it's, it's not running super fast. In assembly, as you'll see in a moment, it's like, boom, instantaneous. But the reason that it's not all that fast in BASIC is that BASIC is an interpreted language, which means that the computer doesn't actually speak BASIC at all. It doesn't know what the heck BASIC is. It's pretty much like a guy in his own country and a foreigner who doesn't speak his language, which would be you speaking BASIC, comes along and says, hey, I want you to do this. It takes time to translate what you want to say and tell them. Pretty much the same thing here. The computer is looking at the basic program and then it has to translate each command, command by command, to see what the heck it wants or what the heck you want it to do and then executes it. And that is why this takes so long. Now, in the meantime, what I've done is I have written the exact same program as you just saw in BASIC in assembly language, and you'll see it right here. At the very beginning, I've got this org $6,000. Don't worry about that. That is what you would call a, a compiler kind of a command, just telling it that when this program has been kind of compiled and ready to run, stick it at that memory location. But um, here is our code, right here, and beside it, 
I've got the basic equivalent that we were looking at earlier. So what we're doing here is we're saying load A, LDA means load A. Now what you need to, to know is a processor has a number of registries in it and they're pretty much like pockets in a jacket. So it's like the processor is wearing a jacket and it's got, in this example here you'll see anyway, it's got a number of pockets. One is called A, one is called B, one is called X, one is called Y, so on and so forth. And what we're doing here is we're saying to it, hey processor, take this value, 255, and put it into your pocket, marked A. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you a little piece of paper with an address on it, and the address is zero. And you put that into your pocket marked X. That's what's happening in the second line. We're loading X with value zero. Then what I've got is, I've got a little kind of a, a, a routine in there that I've called clear. You can see that CLR is written over on the left hand side. And what I'm telling it to do is STA, which means store A, it means put whatever is in your pocket marked A into X. So what I'm telling it to do is to store A to X plus, and that is the very equivalent to the basic command that we saw over at the side, 30 poke X A, and then increment X. Because what's happening there is the processor looks in its pocket, marked X, it sees zero, so it goes to registry zero. It looks in its pocket marked A, it sees that it has 255, and it puts the 255 into the zero. And then it takes a little pen, crosses out the zero on its piece of paper, writes one, and puts it back in its pocket. Now what it's doing in the next line then is it's comparing to see what it has in its pocket X, if that equals 7,799. 7, which is the same as 40 if X is greater than 7999, go to 60 more or less. Because it's comparing what's in X with 7999, and then this BHI, which means branch if higher. So in other words, if what you have in your pocket, marked X, contains a number bigger than 7999, so it's if it's higher than 7999, then go to end, and I've got end there in another kind of a subroutine thing over on the left hand side, and it's marked RTS, which more or less stands for return to system or return to subroutine or something. And um, otherwise, if it's lower than 799, it'll skip that branch of higher end and it'll go down to branch clear. And branches go to, that's what it means. Branch and go to are the same thing. So you've got one that's saying branch if it's higher than the value I've just shown you and otherwise just branch back to clear. It'll go back up to clear and it'll run through it again exactly the same way as the basic program did. And that is the machine language, or not the machine language, but the assembly language equivalent of the basic program that I showed you earlier. And to show you that little fella running I can, where can I bring it up here? So here we are, this one's after finishing. I can reset the little emulator here and I have it saved in here. So we'll do a load M because we're loading a machine language program and I have called it A clear. So that'll load that and when I execute it, bam, it's done that quick. So that's again because assembly isn't interpreted, it's just done. That's, that's how quickly it's done. We can execute it again and we get an error too. I don't know why. But there you go anyway. Oh, another error too. Yeah, I just get an error twos now. But that is our assembly language program clearing the screen for us. So yeah. So the next program that I've written is a program that will draw a line down the screen. So if I load the basic version, which I've called Beeline, and I list it here, you will see the code for that. So what we're doing again is we've got 10A equals 255. That's the value we're poking into an address to kind of fill up an entire byte. And then 20, X equals 20. So the screen address is going to be 
20. It's about in the middle of the screen on the very top. And then what we're doing is we're poking the value A into X. That's it, we're, we're doing as I was doing before. Uh, line 40, we're incrementing X by 40 each time to go to the, the next byte directly under because a line on the MO5 is made up of 40 bytes. So we go from uh, byte zero to 39, and then we go down to the next line at 40 to 79, and down to the next line then from 80 to and so on and so forth. And line 50 is if X is greater than 7999, so again, if we've gone off the very bottom of the screen, go to 70. And 70 will end the program. Line 60 will bring us back to 30, and we're poking in the next address. And when we run that, we get a nice little line just floating down the screen. Now again, I'm after doing an equivalent program here in assembly language. And again, we've got our org, which is like our origin point in memory when it compiles will be 6,000. And the program ends at 6,000 as well. It pretty much means execute it from, but don't worry about those. What we're doing here again is we're loading A with 255. We're saying, here you go, processor, there's 255 for you, stick it in your pocket marked A. This time around, we're given a little piece of paper to put, to put in its pocket marked X with 20 written on it. And I'm after writing, well, I'm after writing line over here on the left-hand side. So this is a kind of our line subroutine. This is what is going to draw the line for us. So we're going to store A, the 255, into X. So firstly, it'll be stored into byte location 20. And then in the next line, what we have is we have LEAX 40X. Now that seems kind of complicated, but what we're doing is, what it stands for, if I remember correctly, is long extended address X, I think. I think it's long, I'm not sure. Anyway, it's, it's something, long extended address X, 40 comma X. So what it's doing is it's adding 40 to X, which is pretty much exactly the same thing as what we were doing in our basic code where we were doing X equals X plus 40. So we start at 20 and when it adds 40 to it, we're going down to 60 and then add 40 to it next time around and it'll go down to 100. Yeah, and so on and so forth. So what we're doing then is we're comparing X to 7999 to see that it hasn't gone off the bottom of the screen again. If it has, if it's higher than 7999, it will branch to the end. And otherwise, if it's slower, it'll branch back to line and do it all over again. So we get pretty much exactly, exactly the same thing as we were doing before, only laid out a little bit differently in order to kind of write our bytes in different places. And when we run that little fella, I will, just reset there and I will load M and I think I've called it A line. There we go. When I execute that, bam, our line is up immediately. So <clears throat> as you can see, assembly language is not very much like basic, but you can kind of, on some levels, understand it a little bit better through basic. And when you start getting a little grip on it, you'll find that your knowledge of assembly language through using it, which really is the only way of learning this stuff. It's, it's great to sit down and watch videos on it. That's the way I started. I sat down and I watched like 10 hours worth of videos on uh, assembly language, what it was, how it worked, different commands and whatnot. And you need that little bit of knowledge, but the way you are going to learn assembly language is to actually sit down in front of a computer with a compiler and use it. So the compiler I use, or the one I've used anyway for for my uh, 68 online assembly language, like I've been showing you here, is LW Asm. And uh, yeah, it's a it's a good little compiler. There's plenty of support for it, and you can yeah you can compile quite easily using it to different formats and whatever. But that's it. That's pretty much the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope to Christ you learned something from it. And until the next video, we, well, I bid you a fond farewell. And enjoy assembly language. Yeah, anyway, see ya, bye bye.